Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Here in Louisiana, we have a saying, we don't eat to live, we live to eat. And y'all, that could have a double meaning. In every Bayou Village and home we visited, we found one thing to be true. Although all of our dishes taste great, they're not all good for us. So my mission today is to take our time-honored recipes and make them a little healthier for us. I'm Chef John Falls. Welcome to Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart. How y'all doing? Hello, hello. A smile on that face, huh? How are you? Nice to see you. Diana, how you doing, baby? <laughs> nice to see you. Hey, everybody, welcome. Welcome to my kitchen, and it's so nice to have you here to help us cook a little bit today. I want to introduce everybody to Diana Polich from Napoleonville. Let's give Diana a hand. She's my guest today. Nice to have you. <laughs> Y'all, Diana has given me a huge challenge today. She sent me a recipe, a family recipe, and I know some of the family members are here, a recipe for her stuffed eggplant with Italian gravy. This dish takes about two weeks to do, you know? <laughs> takes about two weeks. But I had to figure out a way to make that dish taste as good, but at the same time modify it just slightly. Now, we don't do diet recipes here. We don't do low-fat recipes. We modify our recipes so we take as much of the stuff out of it that's not as good for us, but as long as the taste stays the same. So I went over to Diana's home and she gave me a nice lesson in how to prepare it. And I brought my little home camera with me to do some uh, home movies, you know. So, hey, y'all, uh, watch what we did. As I drive through Napoleonville, Louisiana, I'm reminded of the many Italian immigrants who came to Louisiana following the reunification movement in the late 1800s. The Polis family was one and I was happy to visit with Diana. Diana, thanks not only for these great homemade biscuits, but for that beautiful sweet potato butter. It's fantastic. Sure, John, anytime. Diana, I was mentioning that the Italians are dispersed all over Bayou Lafourche amongst the Cajuns. How did they arrive here? Well, after the Civil War, Mr. Gacho's from Gacho's Sugar Plantation needed good laborers to work his plantations along this Bayou area. So he sponsored these Italian families, the Pulitz family, to come from Palermo, Sissy, to the port of New Orleans. Now, now, what year was that? Roughly about 1898. So he owned, uh, Gotchaws is a huge plantation name here in Louisiana. He owned about four or five plantations in this area. He when the strong. Italians arrived, did he give them houses and food and all of that? They were given houses and they were self-sufficient, just like the Cajuns. They grew their own vegetable gardens, their own cattle they raised for milk and for beef meat. So, so, so how did they eventually come to own the land? Well, my grandfather never owned the land that he actually farmed and overseered on, but my father was able, when he took over the farm, was able to purchase the land that I was, a, I was our family home. So at some point in time, the laborer became the plantation owner. Now, yes, how many John. children did uh, they have? They had seven children between the two of them, my grandfather and grandmother. Oh, uh, that must have given the police a lot of grandchildren, huh? Oh, yeah, about... 70 or 80. <laughs> 70 or 80, boy, a lot of labor there. Now, I noticed uh, some naturalization papers through the Port of New Orleans for uh, uh, for the police family, but the name wasn't police at the time. No, like the French and Spanish-speaking priests and people did to the uh, Cajuns, they sort of messed up his name. 
it became, instead of Joseph, I mean, Joseph, Giuseppe Poglisi became Joseph Poli. So they changed it from Poglisi to Poli, which is probably easier for them uh, to pronounce. Yes, sir. Now, uh, uh, the, the dish that, uh, that you're cooking today is so Italian. That came from Palermo, Sicily with my grandmother's people, and she just cooked it through the years, taught my, grand, my mother, who was married to an Italian, how to cook it, and I just learned how to cook, because on Saturdays, I had to go spend Saturday mornings with my grandmother. Played with her for a while, but it was time to cook. She put that chair by the stove, and I had to watch her cook. Well, you know what was so unique about it? You take the eggplant, and you're stuffing it with ground meat, and then slowly simmering it in that tomato sauce. It's just fantastic. Now, I understand she made her own cheese, too. Oh, yes. She had her own uh, milk, so they made homemade cheese from it, and um, it was just a delicacy to eat. Ah, uh, well, I tell you what. I love the look of it. I love to see it simmering. You think I could steal a little taste oh, of yeah, it? Oh, yeah, John, for sure I'll give you a taste. <laughs> well, let's go sample. Okay. Oh, look how great that looks. Now, how long has this been cooking? Well, the two-day Italian way would be to cook the gravy for 12 hours. So you do the, the gravy ahead, one day, yeah. And then the three hours of cooking time the day of the meal. Y'all, it didn't take long for me to pull up a chair with this wonderful Italian family to enjoy the stuffed eggplant. And you know, in every Italian home, it's the same. The more you eat, the happier the cook will be. <laughs> the happier the cook will be, hey, the happier the guest will be, too, because I tell you, I loved your dish. Now, you know, you mentioned uh, pulling a chair up to the stove when you went to play. Is that, that's child labor today, you know? Huh? <laughs> it was a labor of love back then. Yeah, it was. I mean, I mean, every family really back then taught the children to appreciate the kitchen, appreciate good cooking, and at the same time passed on the family traditions and recipes. Is that what happened in your family? Yes, indeed. I mean, my grandmother was a type she'd cook and then a different family in the neighborhood would be the recipient of that food she oh, cooked. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, he... Love to cook for people that like to eat. And, you know, I used to say, even though everybody was poor back then by standards, everybody had plenty to eat because they'd made their big gardens and all those kind of things, and I'm sure y'all were no different. Now, one of the great... So, so your family came from Sicily? Palermo, Sicily. Per Palermo, oh, my gosh. One of the greatest uh, things I think about Palermo, so many of the people who did come from Italy, uh, uh, from Sicily, arrived here in Louisiana from that town of Palermo. Now, when they arrived here, they created a new tradition called the St. Joseph's Altar, right? Yes, sir, they surely did, John. Now, now you tell me you make all the St. Joseph's Altars in Louisiana, or at least in, a lot of them. No, in Lafouche Parish, I would start off by going to Mass early in the morning at St. Joseph Church in Thibodeau, and then I'd take off with a good friend of mine, Miss Michelle, and we just head down and make 12 to 15 altars in that day. We go as far as Golden Meadow in South Lafouche to a private home altar. Now, you brought a couple of the things from some of the altars here, these rosaries. Now, they're made out of typical... Uh, Whatever, these people of the Galliana altar, um, Hattie and Herman St. Pierre, gave me these from their altar. They just do rosaries out of anything. We have one with the pecans, one with the pitch, peach pits, one with fava beans, and they also have this legend of the uh, oh, catfish. I, I, I want to talk about that palette. in a little bit more than that okay. because that is one of the most interesting things I've ever seen. But let me see that fava bean uh, rosary right okay. there. Just. Uh, Rex, I want you to take, y'all, did I introduce Rex? Rex is my cameraman who's always with me. He's also my sous chef, y'all. So, uh, Rex, come on in there. There he is, absolutely. Hey, <laughs> what are you doing, taking my show? I mean, you're the, I'm the star here, huh? Y'all, take a look at this fava bean rosary. Just absolutely, this is what I call Italian right here. And Diana, I want to talk a little bit more about all of these wonderful things. You see, you told me about some blackberry wine that your family made. Well, I make blackberry bounce. So why don't you pour us each a little glass of that blackberry wine. I, not, not just a little glass. That's some strong stuff, Diana. I don't want you and I to start quitting cooking and dancing here, you know? <laughs> all right, y'all, look, Rex. Hey, since you have to hold the camera, you're not going to be able to get this nice blackberry uh, uh, bounce here. Hey, salute, bon appetit, okay? Mm. Mm. Oh. Oh. Isn't that pretty good, Diana? You wouldn't have cough syrup tasted so good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get started, y'all. I'm already late here. Look down in the bowl. This great recipe that Diana gave me, me uh, starts with stuffing the eggplant. And Diana, you stuffed yours with uh, ground beef or pork or ground beef. 
I'm using a lean turkey because I have to modify the fat. A lean turkey and an 8% fat ground beef. Now I'm seasoning it with garlic, parsley, uh, uh, of course onion, celery, colored bell peppers, and basil and oregano and all those nice things. I want to make sure that when I make my stuffing, uh, it's got the same good flavors of, uh, of meatballs because I think that's probably the idea, right, is that we're just trying to make a good meatball stuffing uh, here because whatever's left, you do make you the make meatballs, meatballs with. And throw it in the gravy you know, that was my favorite it. part, you know, making the, meat, <laughs> making the meatballs. Once this is all mixed together like this, uh, Rex, I'm going to stir that really nice. Boy, you see these, uh, I'm making my racket here. Now I'm going to put some fresh ground pepper into it because you know you can put a lot of pepper into this as much as you like, spice it up really good, and then I'm putting salt substitute into it. Now, this is going to cut the sodium dramatically and also the turkey and the lean ground beef is going to cut the, uh, the fat dramatically in this dish. Now, let me show you the eggplant that I did. Diane, I did it a little bit different from you because I, I'm not Italian, uh, although I love Italians. I couldn't get all the stuffing in the little bitty sh uh, strips that you did, so I made a little boat. Was that okay? And then what I did was to put, you told me to put a little mozzarella cheese down in the bottom of the little holes like this and then take some of the stuffing and press down inside like this. And okay, I've done that already and I have them in the pot here. So I want to show you, I've already started to cook and you can see the little meatballs uh, on the side there. I've actually taken it, I've actually taken the... Uh, uh, I've browned them in about two tablespoons of olive oil, so it's really nice right there. Now I have to make the sauce to go into it. So I've just browned those nicely. Is that what I should have done, right? That's so I'm fine. doing okay so, so far. far. So okay, now let's go ahead and get this little, uh, this little uh, gravy ready. You ready? Huh? Mm -hmm. About two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. My model A bottles here, y'all. Nice. Uh, don't you like those? Huh? Now into this, I have to put all of those good flavors. You ready? Huh? A little bit of onions, a little bit celery, a little bit of all the different colored bell peppers. You know why I put all these colored bell peppers in my dishes? Because if you're going to take the fat out of something, then you should at least replace it with something that not only doesn't add fat or sodium to the dish, but will add color and all of these beautiful other things to it. Now, in your uh, 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 stuffing, Diana, you put eggs, mm -hmm. you put whole milk, right? Uh, you, well, you put uh, 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 pet, pet milk, milk yeah. Milk, and, uh, and I was able to eliminate uh, uh, most of that by keeping it, uh, you know, the, the bre uh, putting a little Italian breadcrumbs in, but there's not so much fat in here that I need to pick up the fat with that lean meat, so I was able to hold it all together that way, okay? Now I'm simmering this for a second. Now you put in the whole tomatoes, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm using a low sodium tomato. And of course, that's another important thing to get all that sodium out. Then I'm gonna use uh, tomato sauce. Oh boy, I tell you, this is looking good. That pot's cooking there. A little tomato paste. And this is why, how long do you cook yours? Oh, a total of 24 hours 20, over a two-day period. Tell me that again, tell me that again, huh? 24, 24 hours? hours over a two-day period. Now, what takes so long? The sauce? Um, the sauce. The just, sauce. It's just an old Italian tradition. A, you let a tomato gravy cook, and then once you put the eggplants in it, some more continuing cooking. You know, an Italian uh, cook told me one day, he says, you know, he said, you, you're you not a good cook because he said, you start boiling your spaghetti at the same time you start making your sauce. <laughs> <laughs> That's said 12 true. minutes later. <laughs> so so y'all, Diana cooks hers for 24 hours. Mine is only, mine's only going to cook for about an hour or so. Now I'm going to put in basil and oregano, right? A lot of good herbs. Basil and oregano and a little parsley in there. Again, I'm going to put salt substitute to start to flavor it up. Those fresh herbs are going to really kick it up. I'm going to put in my cracked pepper like that. Then, of course, a little bit water because I have the tomato paste in there, right? So I want to put a little bit of water to break that paste up, and I'm going to mix that around just a little bit. It's looking pretty, it's looking pretty good. Now, I want you to just kind of think, y'all, that this sauce is actually going to cook in Diana's house for about another 24 hours. <laughs> Okay, mine's done. Hey, y'all, mine's done, huh? <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> look, uh, look, uh, look down in here, Rex. You see my meatballs? Oh, yeah. Diane, look at that meatball, baby. I see that meatball right there, huh? Now, that's my meatball, y'all. Okay, now I'm going to take my sauce, and I'm going to pour it. I'm going to make a mess here, but that's the way it cooks on. Okay, Rex, you ready to go? I'm putting yeah. that right down into that pot. Oh, look at that beautiful tomato sauce going down in there. 23 hours soon, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Diane, I'm just picking on you, baby. Yours is absolutely exquisite. Now, I'm going to put this. You cook yours on top of the stove, right? You just cook yours right on top of the stove. You know what I did? I took mine and I put it in the oven for about three hours. Three hours on 375. And three hours on 375, it really came out fantastic. You know, so I'm going to move this out of the way. I have one already done, and I want to show you what it looked like. I think you're going to like it. I think you're going to like this a fair amount. Look at here, Rex. See that? Look how pretty. Look at my little meatballs right there. Y'all, I'm going to put some basil on top of that. Oh, isn't that great? Rex, come over here because you and I need to put some cheese on top of it because Diana puts a lot of cheese in. I'm putting low sodium here cheese on top of it. I'm going to even do this. Diana, look at that. Oh. All right. <laughs> uh, David, I'm going to hand this to you over here, and David's always going to, uh, you don't mind serving that for me, huh, David? Just go ahead and take a, a, a piece of it. And I want Diana to get a piece first, because I want to see if she likes it or not. Okay, y'all, uh, I hope you like that little dish right there. That's a pretty interesting little dish, and I should mention that 54% less fat 54% less fat in that recipe because, uh, 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 because of the lean turkey. 48% less sodium because of the tomato sauce. 49% less cholesterol. 54% less fat. Can you imagine that? So that's a very important thing uh, for us to remember is that it is, uh, uh, it is good to look at modifying, but I want to make sure the taste is the same. Take a quick bite of that, y'all. Mm. That's pretty good. I want. Uh, it's I want got the you, same want, good flavor. Good flavor. Y'all, another thing that I want to. Uh, another thing. Thing I want to talk about is that the uh, uh, the show today. I want you to think a little bit about balance, y'all. About perfect balance in your diet. I was told the other day, and this makes a lot of sense. If you cut 500 calories out of your diet a day, you lose a pound a week. If you cut 250 calories out of your diet a day and just do a little exercise, walk to the mailbox, you lose a pound a week. Pretty doggone good, huh? Y'all, look down in this pot here. We've, got, we've cut substantial calories out of this one. This is Diana's dish. It's absolutely gorgeous. You can see how rich and colorful that dish is. It's absolutely magnificent. Diana, great job on this. I'm keeping this one for myself. You uh, have yeah. to share it with Miss Lolly now. <laughs> okay, I will. All right, y'all. So that's Diana's dish, really good. Now let's jump on this round steak recipe here because I don't know how many of you have ever cooked round steak. Take a look at this. See how beautiful this is? This round steak is off of the round of the beef. And what I do is to take it and cut it into little squares and take off that excess fat. So I have a nice lean cut of meat. It's already pretty lean. And then to do this, this is one of the most I, I often use dishes in Louisiana because it's served with red beans and white beans. I'm seasoning it with a lot of herbs and, of course, some little French and Creole shallots here that we grow in our Cajun gardens. And what I've done is seasoned it lightly with uh, salt substitute and cracked pepper. And I've already started to brown some of these off. So, Rex, I have them up. I have some of them right here. And you see how I've started to, uh, to cook these, and I, all I did was season them two tablespoons of oil, and I've browned them here for about 15 minutes. And this dish is really, as I say, one of the staples of the Louisiana kitchen. Very, very interesting dish. As it starts to brown, you can see the natural, there's no flour on this, but look at the natural caramelization of the, uh, um, of the meat here. Now I'm going to season it the same way Diana and the Italian season, I'm going to put in onions, celery, bell pepper, y'all. A little red bell pepper. Oh, look at that. There's those little French shallots right here. And these are grown in just about all of the Creole gardens. They look like an onion, but they taste uh, like garlic. And, of course, I have to put my garlic in there. Oh. Uh, and once that's stirred, this is going to braise, y'all. This is a long braising process. And 
Once it starts to braise, uh, once, it, once the vegetables start to simmer here, I'm going to add my oyster mushrooms, very, very interesting oyster mushrooms grown wild all over the swamps of Louisiana. Again, a lot of herbs. Basil and thyme, especially in this dish. And then low sodium, low sodium beef stock. Now, you could also boil some of the, uh, uh, some of the meat prior to, uh, to braising it and then using that liquid after it's defatted. 32% less fat, y'all, just by using that low-fat uh, uh, stock right there. And, of course, it's low sodium as well, 39% less sodium. Once this comes together, I put a lid on it. Put a little color in there, too, y'all. I like color, huh? A little salt substitute, again, in the sauce. A little pepper naturally can go into it. Very, very interesting little pepper dish here. And you want to pepper, put a little pepper in there. And then, I put a lid on, I put it in the oven, y'all. 350 degrees for about an hour and a half, and look what it looks like here. I'm gonna put a little taste on here like this, a little bit of the round steak there. Oh, nice and tender, it's almost falling apart. And let me see if I can have a, what did I do with my spoon there, Dave? What are you doing, stealing my spoon? Huh? And then a little bit rice here, and that is absolutely a fantastic, Cajun dish. If I had white beans, y'all, I'd be in heaven right now. Oh, oh, white beans, y'all, just I'd be in heaven. Okay, a couple of dishes I want to show you. This right here is a spinach and sausage dip. Rex, get down in there. 85% uh, less fat because I'm using low-fat Velveeta. 30% less sodium in here. I'm using salt-free chips and turkey sausage went into this dish. So this is a Velveeta sausage dip all cooked together, and Louisianians love meat in that cooking. The next dish right here is a Cajun caviar. Black-eyed peas, y'all. I'm using a turkey tasso, a very lean ham. Half of the oil in the recipe, 65% uh, less fat. That is a really fantastic dish. A lot of great flavor. And y'all, that's one of those dishes that, of course, you, you put out when companies come in right there. Really, really nice. Okay, Diana, while I get this little poached pear dish together, you go ahead and tell me about that, uh, that catfish. Rex, you got to get a shot of that. That is absolutely, this is yeah. synonymous to the Galliana area altars. Now, Galliana is the, around where? The South Lafouche area, along by Lafouche. Right. They are predominantly fishermen, and they have adopted this, the legend of the crucifix fish, and it comes from the saltwater catfish. This is the palate. And they're always taught never to curse a catfish because when it stings, <laughs> when it you, stings because you, because the crucifix. It looks just like Jesus cruise. on the cross right there. And that's the palate of the catfish. The palate huh? of the big cat, gaff top hot saltwater catfish. And this one's attached to a cross, but on the back, it'll show like the Roman shield. And then if you shake it, uh, there's the dice that the they dice. rolled for. Y'all, y'all, fantastic Italian traditions in Louisiana. They're just incredible. I really love them. And Diana, thanks for bringing that. Rex, right here, very quickly. I've taken some beautiful pears, and you see I've channeled them right here. I've peeled them. These are right in the store, nice eating pears. And I'm going to poach these. Let me show you what I'm doing real fast. Right over here in my pot of water, I'm going to add y'all a little orange juice. This is poached pears, a great dessert. Mm, mm, mm. I'm putting in about a half a cup of lemon juice. And, Rex, I'm putting whole lemons in there, too, just so I, I, I like that. A little cinnamon and nutmeg here. And, of course, I'm going to put cinnamon sticks and brown sugar. And then I'm going to put the pears in. And when I drop the pears in, I'm going to let them poach in here for about an hour. I'm also going to add some red wine, which is going to color this a wonderful red color. And this is a dry red wine, y'all. And then I'm going to sink it down in here. Poach it for about an hour, and when they're done, I put them in the refrigerator overnight so they pick up that great flavor. David, why don't you show us those pears you have over there because those are really nice, and put a little bit of that poaching liquid on it. 25% less calories in that dish, y'all, because I'm using uh, half the sugar. And, of course, pears are no, uh, low, very low fat. One gram of fat in that serving. What a dessert when you ate this wonderful dish here. Y'all, who says mama's cooking can't be healthy, right? <laughs> Diana, thanks so much for being here with us today. We really appreciate you and all the family. Give y'all a hand. And y'all...
Thanks to you for stopping by as we continue to cook up more of these great tastes of Louisiana with a change of heart. Y'all, I tell you, we're eating better here today, and I'm going to serve every one of you. How's those pears over there, David? They look pretty good, huh? You put a little, uh, little, little man on that? Yeah. All right. Good. Thank y'all. Thank you so much. Huh? Good. Louisiana. She's the exception and never the rule. She's a mystery that asks not to be solved, but simply to be experienced. Louisiana, Louisiana where you can come as you are and leave different. Whether you're planning a Louisiana convention, family reunion, or a southern vacation, the Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus connects you to information sources throughout the state. The Louisiana Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. The Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau welcomes you and yours to Baton Rouge, Louisiana's state capital. From the old governor's mansion to fabulous dining and Zydeco dancing, Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, featuring Cajun-style chicken, red beans and rice, and buttermilk biscuits, all flavored by the memories and imaginations of Louisiana chefs. Popeye's Chicken and Biscuits, committed to preserving Louisiana's flavor heritage. Something old and something new. Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $29.95. This companion book to the television series features over 150 recipes. To order, please call 1-800-973-7246 or send check or money order to the address shown on your screen. A Taste of Louisiana. Louisiana Cooking with a Change of Heart is available for $19.95. This VHS video contains one episode of Chef John Fulce's new television series. Please send check or money order to the address on your screen and mention the show number with your order.